Who said it best? Was it Mickey that said some imagination or was it a wonderful purple dragon that said imagination is truly a blast? What, a little bit too much? That's all coming up inside the media cabinet. Hello everybody and welcome to a triumphant return to the media cabinet. I know, and I say this a lot, I haven't put out a new video in a while, and I'm sorry. Uh, I've been busy with a lot of stuff and I just haven't had time to put out a video. Um, so, uh, this is, as I usually do, a completion video of, um some of the stuff that I've recently gotten uh, in the talks of um, media and, of course, theme park stuff, which I still show off. Um, but as you can see uh, in the intro video, of course, I have something really awesome to show off. Um, we got the Figment Loungefly here from, of course, Epcot. Uh, this is my first Loungefly. Um, and I am a huge fan of the uh, Figment of Imagination uh, from Epcot. And the um, whole reason why I got this, and I haven't really explained it or in my videos yet, but I am now officially part of the Disney College program. Um, so my program starts on August 5th. And, uh, you know, I got this for when I go to the parks to use as my park bag. Um, but this is so amazing. It, it's, I love the little details, like there's wings on the back of it. And, of course, figment on the back. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to have this. So, but what's, what's inside, you ask? Well, this is how... Yeah. For the video, I'm of course showcasing everything that I've recently acquired um, over the past couple, I guess you could say months now, honestly, um, in media. Um, so we, we have, I got some great stuff to show off in this video, um, including some video games, uh, got some awesome novelizations. Uh, including one that literally released today. Um, so, and then uh, we do, I do have one movie, one movie just to showcase uh, for the, um, for the video. Um, but yeah, this was like the main attraction. <laughs> um, so, and then I have uh, one other theme park thing. So first we're going to dive into video games. Um, I have four Nintendo Switch games, uh, free, um, free PlayStation 5 games. Um, so, uh, first two games, uh, well, the first, first game, I wasn't really planning on buying it. Um, I know, um, it was revealed on, for, uh, for Switch and... When they were, I, I forget what it's what it's called when they're announcing new games, um, but the Nintendo Switch showcase, and I'm I'm looking at it and I'm like, eh, I'm not I'm not gonna get it, but you know what? Just out on a whim, I was like, you know what? Let's get it anyway. I didn't do the demo. I just dived right in, and it, it's really fun. It's fun to explore a side character. Of a mascot that has been a part of the company for the longest time um, and in retrospect I'm talking of course Princess Peach uh, we have Princess Peach Showtime this is a fun little platformer of course featuring featuring Princess Peach and Toad very briefly um, but the times that I have played this I, I really enjoy it. it it's a lot of fun Fun little platformer, of course, from Nintendo. Uh, and we open it up, and we do have some artwork on the inside, including the little Nintendo Switch cartridge. So, 
Uh, next up, never really planned on getting these games, but I do love the IP that these games spawned off of. Um, and I loved the live action movie and um, the recent animated one. And there is a new one coming out with Rihanna um, as the main role. Um, so uh, I am talking about Smurfs. Uh, so we have the Smurfs um, miss Mission Relief and we have uh, the Prisoner of the Green Stone. Um, the whole reason why I ended up getting this was because I had a $20 certificate for um, Best Buy that I didn't want to expire. So I was like, you know what, I'm, there wasn't really anything that I was trying to get from Best Buy. Um, but I was like, you know, it, I'll just, it, it was like a derf. Um, so then I got the first one from uh, GameStop because the first one was not available at Best Buy anymore. Um, so, uh, from what I've experienced from playing, uh, this one, this so far, it's a lot of fun. If you're anybody that likes the Smurfs or that grew up watching the Smurfs, um, this is a fun little game. The uh, playing style, it's entirely up to you because it is available on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series. So, it's entirely up to you. For me, I was just like, you know what, with these two games, I just want them on my Nintendo Switch. I want to give my Nintendo Switch some more love. Um, so that's why I ended up getting these for my Nintendo Switch. Um, again, they're great little 3D platformers. The worlds are created beautifully, the different biomes and areas that you go. The only thing that I will say from what I've noticed from playing it so, uh, playing this one so far um, on Nintendo Switch, the load times is, it's really long. It takes a long time for it to load. Um, but they are rated E for everyone. Um, this one, the Prisoner of the Greenstone is rated at one E, 10 and up. So, um, on the inside of this one, we do have some artwork, including the little cartridge. Uh, and it, on the back, in he, on the back here, it says... The forest is in great danger. Heal, heal all the plants on your way. And then on this one for the Prisoner of the Greenstone. Meet the team of iconic Smurfs. Smurfs. Liberate the village of the Smurfs from the grip of the Greenstone. Um, on, on the inside of this one. Spoiler warning. Not much. Not much. Um, so you do have your little cartridge there. Haven't played this one yet, obviously. I want to play the first, first, the first one first. Uh, and then this I just got today, so I have not played it, but I do have Shredder's Revenge and the Cowabunga Collection. I have the physical version of the Cowabunga Collection and I have the digital version of Shredder's Revenge on my Nintendo Switch. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead get it for get this for Nintendo Switch due to the fact that the PlayStation 5 version really doesn't have any updates to like the DualSense controller. Um, but we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade Wrath of the Mutants. Apparently this was a Raw Frills arcade game from 2017. This is the first time hear hearing of it. It's from, of course, the reboot of the of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series, um, the more 3D animated one, uh, which I like. I'm not really a huge fan of the eyes of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I know the newer one that came out from Seth Rogen is getting a show at some point. I just I don't know when. Um, I love the colors on here, the yellow and the blue, and then of course you got the turtles and everything. So, Defeat the Mutants and Save New York. The 2007 arcade classic returns with all new additional levels and bosses and unleash turtle power. Um, and this is from his, uh, oh no, that's, oh, never mind. Um, you can play up to four people on this. Um, and there is nothing on the inside, but you got the little cartridge down there. Excited, excited to play this. Um, and so that's all of the Nintendo Switch games. 
that I got. Um, and now we're diving into the um, into the uh, PlayStation uh, 5 games. Uh, and I'm going off of the order that I got them, not release order. Uh, so we have, first we have Rise of the Ronin from Team Ninja. Um, I've only played a little bit of this, and what's confusing at the beginning is like, okay, I thought that I'm just making one character. But it's like, no, you're making twins. So I, I don't know why. I just said, alright, I'm going to make a brother and a sister and everything. It's not terrible from what I've played so far. I'm liking it. It's great. It's no Ghost of Tsushima, but it's okay. Um, Forge Your Fate is what it says on the back. And you can read what it says on there. Um, I know when the... Um, state of play dropped with this i know a lot of people were like mm -hmm. uh, again from what i've played so far it's okay it's not terrible i need to just give it some more time uh we open it up and there was a pre-order thing that i did activate and uh you have your disc art next we have kind of a game that people were excited about, but when they started playing it, they wish it never happened. For people that are a fan of the Wii's of the two games that came out before this game, people loved it and wished that this game would have stayed like that, even if it included enhancing the 3D instead of the 2D. And they probably just wanted to keep the RPG the way it was. I'm talking about the two South Park games, The Stick of Truth and The Fractured But Whole. And, of course, its predecessor that came after that, Snow Day. Here's what I will say about Snow Day. I'm not mad at it. I like the change from the 2D to the 3D. And I like the new way of playing the game. I'm not really big on those, okay, so you're this character, and it's your turn to attack, and then the other people are going to attack. That's why I like Final Fantasy VII Remake with that, with that free-flow combat. I'm really enjoying this. I like the currency system being toilet paper, for God's sakes. But, uh, again, I'm having fun with this so far. You know, I know that there's some stuff that's missing that people wanted from the other two. But again, I've had no problems with this so far, and I enjoy the 3D. So, um, it, it's not that expensive either. It's a cheaper game. So, uh, and I know that there is a collector's edition. I didn't get the collector's edition. I don't need a talking toilet paper holder of Cartman every time I pull a piece of TP. Um... So, but no decoration on the inside. And then, of course, here is the discard. I would have wanted the beanie and the snow and the snow glove, though. Still with things. And next, final PlayStation 5 game. This game, I had no intentions. Literally, no intentions of picking this up. I walked by my brother's room, and I saw him playing it. And then I found out some of my friends from work... We're going to be getting it. And I'm like, mm -hmm, okay, I'm going to get a copy of it too. And I have had so much fun playing it. Um, it's comical. It's a great combination of aliens and um, Terminator. And it's just so freaking funny. Uh, a lot of people say it's like a, a fun like expansion game of like Starship Troopers. I don't want Starship Troopers. Please do not attack me in the comments. Um, but I am talking about Hell Divers 2, the battle for democracy. Um, this game is so much fun. I've been playing it with my friends from work, and we have nothing but a great time and so much laughs. Uh, I love the haptic feedback on the DualSense controller. I love the adaptive triggers with the guns. I love the guns. I love the capes and all the armor and all the crap. All the I love the robot levels better than the bug levels. I find them a lot more enjoyable and they're a lot more easier. Um, but 
you, you, there is no offline mode. You can't play this by yourself. You need four people to play this. It's so much fun. Um, I've never heard of Arrowhead Studios, though, but it is also PlayStation Studios. Um, I'm actually going to be playing this later on tonight with some of my friends. Uh, but I love this game. If you have not get it, got it yet, get it, get it, get it. If you're not really that type of person that plays online games, but you want a game that can get you with your friends, then get this game. Get it. Um, so, and we do have a fun artwork. Now, I never played the first Helldivers, but I don't really think you need to play the first Helldivers to play this. So, get this game. Get it. Damn it. Sorry. Uh, so there you have it, folks. There are the free PlayStation uh, free ga uh, five games that I picked up. So and that's gonna do it for the video games. Uh, and next we're gonna go into um, uh, the only movie that I got for this. Um, I saw this with my friend in IMAX, and it was a thrill ride from start to finish. Awesome revenge flick, uh, but. Kind of like the source material and the focus matter on what it really is on, it, it's intense because it is something that does actually happen in today's society. You know, we all see something that looks like it's legit, okay? And we click on it. Some people have. And then, boom. Everything. Gone. You know? And people do drastic things to themselves because they fell for that trap. This movie kind of goes into what happens if you ha if you are someone that watched over someone and those evil people attack them, and then the person goes on a huge revenge mission and takes care of those people. It's battle against corporations and frauds and all those servers and systems and businesses about corporate um you know just taking down the system and everything and it's just intense it's awesome if you like jason statham you are definitely going to want to pick up a copy of the beekeeper i saw this in imax and boy what a trip this was it was awesome um it's from mgm and warner brothers um Love the colors, the yellow and orange on there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pop this open. Need to redeem the digital code. Now I'm going to be honest, there's really no artwork on the, on the desk. It's just a black desk. So, but yeah, uh, it has, um, what's his name? Um, Josh Hutcherson basically playing a villain douchebag kid um so it, it's it's so much fun just just check it out uh, before i get to the movie novels that i got movie tv novels media novels um one other thing and i like to shout out my friend mr mikey mayhem on um magic city mayhem on twitter and facebook um, or X, uh, I would like to, uh, give him a shout out for picking this up for me. Um, Islands of Adventure at Universal Orlando Resort is celebrating its 25th anniversary with a beautiful, um, wide of merchandise, uh, with what is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful marketing, um, images that I've ever seen for, I mean, Parks put out some amazing uh, merchandise nonetheless um, but the artwork that they put out uh, for the 25th anniversary I love it it really brings back some nostalgia for anyone that has experienced Islands of Adventure um, including one of the most greatest attractions ever and I just love each of the artwork so we have this awesome pin uh, which showcases um, some of the lands uh, including Jurassic Park, Seuss Landing, Marvel Superhero Island, Toon Lagoon, and the Lost Continent uh, with um, uh, Dueling Dragons. Now, I don't know how well that's going to focus. It's not doing its best with focusing. Um, but it says, experience 
the adventure universal islands of adventure 25 years um what can be said that has not already been said about universal's islands of adventure you know steven spielberg you know he put together two of the most awesome parks aside from disney in orlando you know and you look back at like when, and I'm just using this as an example, when Rosie O'Donnell did her show um, from Islands of Adventure, and I think it was literally just as the park opened, um, they are getting on The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. And he explains how like they brought this idea to the table and no one thought that this ride was going to get as popular or thought that something like this was going to be able to be pulled off. And then all of a sudden, boom, the end result is one of the greatest and most high tech revolutionary attractions of its time. And it has, um, you know, given light to so many different attractions with the same like interactive dark ride experience um even though it doesn't exist anymore curse of dark castle that used to be at bush gardens williamsburg uh transformers divide 3d that opened at universal studios singapore um and now universal studios beijing where they have the jurassic world adventure and you know not only do you have the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man uh, with that um, interactive Omni-Mover experience at Islands of Adventure, but over at Universal Studios Orlando, you have the Florida version of Transformers The Ride 3D. So you have that ride experience both in those two different parks. And I know that there's a ride that's similar at Ferrari World and Abu Dhabi and United World Emirates. Um, there's, um, uh, it's something with Ferrari, but I just, I forget the name of it. But anyway, Eyes of Adventure was one of the, like, it was a park that truly made a name for itself. And every single attraction that is represented on this pin is amazing. Dudley do Right Thrips Off Falls, The Cat in the Hat, Jurassic Park River Adventure, Dueling Dragons, which was an amazing roller coaster. So, uh, again, huge shout out to my friend. Um, I call him Mikey Mayhem. Uh, again, his handle is Magic City Mayhem on X and um, on Facebook. Um, so, again, thank you, Mikey. I appreciate this, buddy. Very happy to add this to my pin board. All right, and last few things for the video, and then that is going to be it for today. Um, so, uh, this past November, uh, one of the greatest, longest-running sci-fi shows celebrated 60 years of being on the air and traveling through time and space. Uh, we saw the return of a familiar face with one last mission um, to do, and we saw a rewrite... Uh, in the series uh, with a new actor, a new story, and a new series set to debut coming very soon in May on Disney+, Plus, which is the new home of the show. And I'm talking, of course, about Doctor Who and the 60th anniversary. And here in my hand, I have all three novelizations for each of the three 60th anniversary specials. Uh, we have The Star Beast... Wild Blue Yonder, and of course, The Giggle with Neil Patrick Harris as the Celestial Toy Maker on the front, right and center. And then, of course, if you take a look right there, that's an iconic piece of TV history, folks. Stooky Bill, uh, which was noted and quite possibly we known as the first image ever seen on television. Um, I mean, if it's going off of actual facts, if not, there's Google for that, people. So, here we have, and when it says Target, don't get it confused with the wonderful red uh, bullseye. Yeah, that, that's totally different. So, 
I haven't read these yet, but each of the uh, specials are still streaming on Disney+, Plus, including the Christmas special, The Church of Ruby Rose, which is the full-blown first episode with the 15th Doctor, Shuti Gatwa, and uh, his new companion, Ruby Sunday, who the name of the actress that plays Ruby Sunday right now is escaping me. Sorry. All right, and our last item for today on the video. Uh, literally, this book is out today. You can get it wherever books are sold, including Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And yes, I even am going to say bo uh, Books A Million. Um, if you have read the other predecessors, including Godzilla, uh, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and Godzilla vs. Kong, then it is now time to dive into the next amazing chapter, Into the Monsterverse. It is still doing good in box office and doing good in theaters. I recently saw it in, in Screen X, and it was an amazing experience. Uh, but this is the next chapter in those two amazing kaijus. Uh, we are talking Godzilla x Kong, the new empire. Uh, this is, of course, the new novelization from Greg Keyes. Um, and uh, I just recently got this literally today uh, from Amazon. Uh, this is a trade paperback, so it's not a mass market paperback, unlike the rest of the books that I read. But you know what? It's okay. Um, the color on the cover is amazing. Uh, the color in the names of our two warriors is I love those colors and like it like it says right here monster verse um so rise together or fall alone um I I'm really excited about reading this um like I said I recently just saw the movie and it was it was amazing uh, especially seeing it on screen X if you've never experienced Screen X, think of it more of a more immersive theater experience, um, where it's not just on a flat pane. Um, pain. It's literally on the walls, but only the wide scenes. That's the only thing. Other side, uh, besides from that, not that great. But still, nonetheless, for a movie like this, for the scenes when you're in Hollow Earth, really cool, really good. So. Well, folks, there you have it. Long video, lot to show, but you know what? Still, very good, nonetheless. Anyway, guys, this may be my last video for a while. You never know. I do have some movies coming soon that I'm very excited to unbox for you guys. Um, but um, until then... As I always say, thank you guys for checking out the Media Cabinet. I hope you guys have a good one, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.